Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be looking in on my Red Wiggler only bins. So you can see the top is pretty dry here. I'm going to have to do something about that. But let's take a flip in through here and see how they're doing. You can tell that everything is looking pretty, you know, damp and acceptable at the bottom here. Uh, these worms all uh, stem from the same 500 cocoons that I got from Emily uh, in 2019. So I've been purposely trying to expand my herd of just red wigglers lately. So I have started busting them out into additional bins to see if I can purposely do that. Now everybody's been getting some pumpkin treats lately. So let's see what they are doing here. I think I feel the pumpkin all the way to the bottom here. So let's see what we've got. Looks like they're making some good castings. And we definitely have a good worm ball. They have made very good use of that pumpkin. So that's a nice worm ball and uh, they all appear to be very happy. Got a lot of different sizes here. Um, look like got some good size ones as well as babies. I think we transferred about uh, a pound and a bit maybe to this bin the last time. So this is the first time that we've we've looked in on this bin. So let me, there's not really much there but we'll put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Now this bin is just run using my normal prepared bedding, which is probably about 75 to 80% shredded cardboard and paper. Um, and in addition to that, there is also a big handful. I make it in 40 gallon tubs and there's a big handful of coconut core that goes in there, as well as you can see that there's a lot of ground eggshell in here. When I'm preparing the bedding to let it sit for a week or so, I will put in some um, kelp meal and usually some sort of a sugar. Uh, in my case, I usually use molasses. And the water and then some worm castings from the same kind of worm. Um, and then I will let it all sit for a couple of weeks, ideally, to let the microbial population of the new bedding get uh, built up so the worms can process it. So that is what you're seeing here is the bedding, is, is that prepared bedding. And as you can tell, these, this bin does not need any more bedding. I usually start a bin with a lot, a lot of bedding. And so, oop, I've got a whole other worm ball over here. What? Surprise! Worm surprise. Well, good job, worms. I don't, I don't know what you're getting into over here, but good job. And even though it's a new bin, you can see they're already making quite a few castings. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't know what was over there. But it looks like they've pretty much taken care of almost all of their food, so let me go grab them something more to eat. All right. So this has not been frozen, but it has been outside. And it's been kind of freezing around here, so... It has not had a, a good hard freeze. So they're gonna get some banana and some melon, hot dog bun. We'll put it down here in this other corner since they're still kind of chewing on that pumpkin from the other side. Checking for banana stickers. Tried to remember to take them all off before we started eating on them. Maybe that's a better way for me to remember how to remember to quit. Get, quit uh, losing the stickers in the bin. But that's a pretty good si size feeding for a pound of worms. And uh, the grit is already in the bedding, so I don't have to worry about that. So we're gonna cover these guys up. I think they're okay. I'm just gonna make sure the lid's on a little tight, and uh, that way the moisture will stay in. I think the moisture's okay now that I've reincorporated it. Let's go look at the next Red Wiggler bin. All right, in going from newest to oldest, this is the next oldest bin. And um, wow, we're having a good springtail explosion going on here. 
not sure what's causing it, but uh, anymore I just let the bin do its cycles. I used to try and proactively add uh, neem cake and things like that, but I've just learned that it doesn't seem that it doesn't matter what I've done. It seems like they just go in cycles, and right now it is a a cycle for the uh, springtails. And sooner or later they will calm down and, and almost go away, well, all on their own without me messing with them. They're helpers in the bin, so I don't really, I mean, you don't need to get rid of them. I think they're creepy. They get in my arm hair and, and it gives me the creeps for like hours afterwards, but um, in the real world, they're not hurting the worms and they're not hurting the bin. They're probably helping. Uh, so I'm just gonna, my policy now on bin critters that are not harmful to worms, I'm gonna leave them. I mean, if it turns out to be a, a slug or some big thing like that that's gonna hurt my plants later, then I'm gonna get rid of it. But if they're not harmful to the plants or the worms, I'm gonna leave them. So I'm just gonna keep digging around here to see if I can find anything found a little concentration here on what is either a melon or a pumpkin skin. Not a pro uh, well, there's the seed, so it's got to be a melon. Keep flipping through here. So you can tell this is much farther along. You can still see the bedding, but it is definitely on its way to being degraded. So I think we might have missed the worm ball that I don't remember feeding anything other than a handful of melon. Okay, I think the moisture is going to be okay now that I've incorporated the top. One more loop around here. My bins are always run kind of full all the time. Um, it's just how I do it. I works for me so that's how I do it all right well let's get them a little bit of food here and there is also about a pound of worms in here this was split off from the original bin too with with about a, a pound of worms so they're gonna get the rest of that melon and I guess that's that's pretty much all they're gonna get is just melon uh, when we come back, there's probably going to be some sprouts. Um, and again, the grit is in with the bedding, so I'm not going to add any more of that. And we'll cover them up. Put them back on the shelf, and I'll go get the oldest of the three Red Wiggler only bins. Okay, here's the oldest one. You can see I've got some sprouts growing here from something. The worms have uh, ejected a sticker. Thank you, worms for helping me out when I'm not doing a good job. We've also got a springtail business going on here. Seeing quite a few cocoons. So they are happy and reproducing more cocoons. Oh geez, look. Like two more cocoons. They are very, very happy. Again, more cocoons. Alright, well, let's see if we can find a worm ball or anything. This bin is certainly probably a month or so from completion, looking at how well the castings are completed here. Um, there's a peach pit. Let's be in here until doomsday. These things literally don't break up, break down. Um, I don't know how they grow anything with these. They, they yeah, it's going to be in there a while. Alright, so we're still seeing some of the uh, cherry pits. I'll pull out a few here and there. Um, just to get them out of there. Let's see, looking for any kind of a worm ball here from a former feeding. And I see a concentration, but I really don't see a mob. Uh, just looking at foods that take forever, I showed you the peach pit. I mean, we're talking five years for a peach pit, unless you do something to it to break it down. Peanut shells and other kind of nut shells, um, like pistachio and stuff, probably about a year to get them. 
the uh, apple, or not apple, banana stem that the bananas come all attached to, that probably takes three or four months minimum, depending upon how big it is. Um, this is actually an avocado shell or peel or whatever you want to call it, and you're probably looking at four or five months for that as well. The pits from the avocado, probably six months to a year to get them completely um, broken down. Let's see. Oh, kiwi. It kind of desiccated. Weird. But yeah, once they decide to eat the avocado here, um, it'll turn red on the inside. And then after it starts turning red, then you know it's ready to roll and it'll be broke down in a month or so. So there's the, the shell of the kiwi skin. This is a mango. And it actually, it's probably similar to an avocado where you're looking at about six months. And I can't tell if they're playing in the fibers or if they're actually in there. No, I think they're just playing in the fibers. They seem to enjoy fibrous things. Um, it, it's weird I say the word enjoy, but I don't know what they're doing in there if they don't enjoy it. It's, there's got to be some reason for it. If you give them burlap or something like that, they weave themselves in and out of it and t-shirts and stuff like that. I don't know if they enjoy it or if it simulates something natural that they would come across that's interesting to play with. Um, so I'm just going to call it something to play with. So there's probably close to two pounds of worms in here, maybe more. You know, I only count them when I harvest, and so I think probably a couple pounds. You can tell they're pretty well distributed. I could probably split this bin again. Um, we'll think about that. I don't. I already have a lot of bins, a lot, a lot of bins. And thanks to CC, I have a, a lot of spare food also for them. So that works uh, for my system. But yeah, I think all the slow foods, I'm just going to lob them all together so I can see what's going on there. But then we can give them some new food, and I'll put that in a different pocket so we can tell uh, where we fed. All right, let me get them some food. Uh-oh, guess I didn't get that sticker. Let's see, now that one seems like it's kind of, I'll leave it in there, see if it doesn't break down. Those were organic bananas, so maybe they have organic stickers. I don't know. All right, so that's what they're going to get. A bunch of tea bags, bananas, and I think another hot dog bun. All right, and then we're going to cover them up. So if you have any questions about the red wigglers or my worm bins or my wormery or anything, feel free to put that in the comments below. And uh, any comments, I also like to read all of the, the comments and I respond. Um, when I can, but usually pretty quickly to anybody's questions they have for their own worm bin if they have problems. Try to help be a resource for new worm farmers as uh, some of the people in the worm community were good resources for me uh, when I was starting out. But if you like this, I have a whole playlist of the Red Wiggler only bins and I can link that in the end screen or I can put a, you know, a little pop-up here if you want to look at the latest video of this to see what the feeding looked like before um, and see what the wigglers have been doing. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.